Hey folks, and welcome to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. I am Technivorous, and in this series I'm going to show you from the beginning, step by step, how to use Tinkercad to create your own 3D printed objects. Stay tuned, there's a lot to see, and I've got plenty of these videos coming at you, so don't forget to subscribe. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around, because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. All right, and welcome back to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. I am your host, Technivorous, and if you've followed our first two videos, you have a pretty good grasp on the basics of object manipulation with Tinkercad. Today, we are going to go a little bit further and actually create an object. So it doesn't really matter what we make. Uh, what we're going to do is show you how to export that object so it can be 3D printed. And then we will also take a look at the import button as well, just to kind of show you some of the things that you can do to objects that you bring in here. So I apparently am making a, a shiny Jutuli. Uh, you can change the name by clicking it and changing the name. And I will do that now. If I can learn to spell. Yeah, that's good enough. TCAD tutorial. Um, those random names are pretty awesome, but once you get quite a few of them built up, it's really hard to find what you're looking for by remembering the name. So uh, I highly recommend changing changing the name. You know, Windows, it's not an optimal time for an update right now. Why don't you just snooze on that, okay? Um, yeah, changing the name is definitely recommended. That way you can keep better track of your objects. So let's make something simple. I see two shapes here. I'm going to make uh, an object that would require support, I would think, but might look kind of cool. Let's go ahead. We'll delete that. What we're going to do is grab a work plane. Set it right on the top of here. Maybe slightly off kilter like that. Drag in this. And then go back to our work plane. If it'll let us. Uh, see, that was the issue I was having. So um, you don't, you can just click this and click the work plane. You don't have to drag and drop. So now I can move this object up and down, in and out of this object, as well as around. It's not stuck to the bottom surface here. So let's go ahead and bring that guy down. I don't want the top coming out completely, but something like, let's get right up to there. And we will shift and select both of these guys. Remember, you can also drag and select both of them. We have grouped them into one object. I'm seeing now, I need to adjust this side a little bit. So to do that, we're going to grab that black one so I don't adjust the whole thing. And we will combine. And there we have it. Just a cute little mushroom. Nothing special nothing really crazy um, this is a very simple object using some of the tools that we've accrued so far obviously if I were to print this it would need some support around the bulb but let's go ahead and check out that export feature and you get a couple of options here you get either everything in the design or the selected shape now I only have one shape in my design because I grouped them together so that'll work just fine for me if you have multiple objects arranged along the build plate and you'd like to export them all for easy printing, you can just click everything in the design. You have a few options for exporting, and these are for 3D printing. You have a .glb, whoop, I didn't mean to click that, a .obj, and a .stl. Uh, we're going to go with STL because that is the file that we're going to be using to bring into Cure to print it. Um, you can use these other options if you feel like bringing it into another program like Blender or doing some other things to it. And the SVG down here is just for laser cutting. So I use that as well, but that's not what we're here for today. Let's go ahead and export the STL. And there you have it. It was pretty quick. I have it showing up down here. I can open it, click Show in Folder. It's going to open up my downloads folder and then I can just drag and drop that into Kira for slicing and printing. 
The other thing I wanted to take a look at is the import feature. Now here we can drag and drop 2D or 3D files from the computer and we can also click choose a file. So let's see if I have something handy here that we can drag and drop in. Uh, I have a lot of models here. Here's a simple pawn. This should be easy. We'll drag and drop that. It's an STL. We're looking at working in millimeters. We want 100% scale and these are the dimensions we are using. <clears throat> so it's taking a second to import. It will pull it in here. This is a relatively small object. It is just a chess pawn so uh, bear with me for just a moment while it loads and there we have it. So we now have this object. Uh, the interesting thing about this is this object can also be made into a hole. So you can design something really specific in another program and bring it in here or if you have a model that you would like to add text to that's super simple. You just go ahead and drag the work plane to where you want the text and then you go ahead and hit text and scale it to the size you want obviously this would be really really tiny on this model um, but you get the gist of it so now that I've manipulated the object and changed it I can let's let's drag it to there let's uh, put our work plane back to normal and then we should be able to move it into the model here so it just sticks out like that, yeah. Now, obviously, I'm not going to print this. There's, it just says text, and there's some weird corners. But now I can take this, this object, and I can combine these two again. And I can export them as a single object for printing. So super easy way to manipulate other models that you've brought in from other programs, or maybe even something that you downloaded you just want to add your own flair to, adjust the size of a hole that's already there, or something like that. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I have lots more of these Tinkercad videos coming, so if you're liking it, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Leave a like down below. Leave me a comment on specifically what feature or part or tool of Tinkercad you would like to see a video on, and I'm sure I will get around to it eventually. That's going to be it, guys. Technivorous out. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out. This is Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021, and I am Technivorous. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful to you, and stick around. We'll see you in the next one.